And we're like, we meet with you like every week about what we're doing. And now you're telling us we should have realized four years ago that it was fundamentally and completely illegal? Like that doesn't make any sense. What is up guys, Kevin Cage back with another XRP update. I hope you are all doing great. Today's gonna be a very interesting video. We're gonna be breaking down some XRP news, some news regarding Ripple, and of course a few other things. And what I've been doing in the cryptocurrency space is we are waiting for XRP to finally make a move, and of course the launch of Flare Networks. So let's get into it. So we have xrpcharts.ripple.com actually showing up right here. We can see the ledger number is over. 62 million ledgers successfully closed since XRP's inception. Never a single error, no issues of double spending like Ethereum or ETC or Bitcoin. So truly, this is in a league of its own. And of course, I believe price will follow in due time. I want to share a few things with you. Of course, we have a huge whale alert and money is on the move. We see roughly 745 million XRP on the move. Today's value is about $330 million transferred from an unknown wallet to another unknown wallet. This is whale alert. You guys can follow them on Twitter at whale underscore alert. You can click on the transaction and actually see their actual transaction on the XRP Explorer right here you can see the payment you can see the actual fee 20 xrp to send that much money wow and uh this is what we are aiming to displace if you sent you know 50 million dollars do you really want to pay a three percent fee no you want to pay pennies on the dollar so this is just another example of utility and if you guys are new to the xrp community i encourage all of you to go watch all the old interviews watch one of them in particular it's one of my favorite is uh michael errington and brad garlinghouse on stage with the gentleman and discussing sending xrp and i the reason i said 50 million earlier is because that's exactly what errington did they sent 50 million dollars via xrp instead of doing a two to three day wire transfer and it's it's just a no-brainer it costed pennies i believe he said what like 30 cents you guys can go check that out for yourselves all right now we have matthew uh matthew liny on twitter guys great research in this community now full disclaimer this is complete speculation but i still want to entertain this possibility um if you guys have been watching this channel for a while you're already familiar with this i know i've shown these documents or at least these um websites a while back as well so let's kind of go over this and then I have a few other exciting things and props to all that can stick around. So we have the XRP pre-allocation looked to be the plan from the beginning. Now this is Peter Thiel, not Thiel. This is how you pronounce his last name. I actually have his book right behind me on the one called Zero to One about just true innovation. Of course, he is a very sex successful VC venture capitalist. Now he, of course, is the co-founder and essentially one of the main founders of PayPal with Elon Musk of Tesla, SpaceX, you guys name it. So that's what they really focused on early on. So yes, Elon, don't be fooled. He's familiar with the payments ecosystem as well when you are in fact a founder of PayPal. And notice they had this founders fund and oh, no surprise, it was an investor in the company Ripple, just like Google Ventures, just like all of these ecosystems. And many people are forgetting all of this because they're distracted by a 40 cent XRP. And it's completely up to you guys. I'm well diversified in this market, but I'm not going to be losing sight of the horizon because I'm bored with XRP price action. We're going to be discussing that a little more on obviously just common sense. And even what we can expect with this overall lawsuit, um, I'm not selling or liquidating my XRP to chase gains. Um, I've been doing very well. Everybody on Patreon has been doing exceptionally well, and I'm so happy for them because that's much more important to me is making an impact instead of obviously making money. And I kind of want to just read a few things right here. So we have this news today from OpenCoin. And keep in mind, OpenCoin, Ryan, Ryan Fugger back in the day, 2004, before Bitcoin was even a thing in 2009. A lot of weird coincidences. Now, this is later, of course, if you guys know the Ripple timeline. But a startup today that launched its own digital currency called Ripple. So before it was called XRP, it was called Ripple. And the currency that today is called XRP was actually just called Ripples. And the abbreviation was XRP, which stood for X Ripples. Now, if you guys are familiar, of course, with gold, you know, the elemental on the elemental chart, it's AU. Well, of course, the ticker in terms of trading is XAU. Silver instead of AG on the, in terms of the element, it's XAG. Why? Because they put an X in front of it, even XLM with stellar lumens because it is not owned by any individual nation or country so xrp of course we joke around and we'll say it stands for extremely rapid payments or x rapid or anything or cross you know border payments something like that um ideally it really just stands for xrp x ripples um or even formerly it was xns years ago 
It's right here. Tools for making transactions in other currencies, including Bitcoins, suggest that may change. This company says it has attracted early investments, years ago guys, of an undisclosed size from established venture capital firms, just like Andreessen Horowitz. We are all familiar with them and their contributions to the crypto space, which reportedly made over $100 million when Microsoft bought Skype. Lightspeed Ventures, one of the first investors in network company, I forget how to pronounce that one, which sold to VMware. I'm familiar with uh, VMware last year for 1.6 billion now open coin today i mean it later turned into you know ripple labs has also received an investment from early stage wing the founders fund who's behind that well it's a venture firm owned by paypal co-founder essentially the founder peter Thiel. now peter Thiel also went big and was one of the biggest investors early on in facebook can you guys see the connections, of course? And we have the link down here. I did, in fact, retweet it, but I encourage all of you to follow Matthew O-I-N-Y. Now, there's a bunch of thoughts on this, of course. You know, even King Solomon really quick. They've discussed this before and literally said they couldn't give away Ripple back in the day unless I'm mistaken. I think David said that. There's been a lot of commentary, of course, David Schwartz with this. And then, yeah, even Matt bringing up a good point. I think there was a plan to give people in India the coin, meaning XRP, to disperse it so that users could actually be incentivized to use the network. And of talks of even Chris Larson saying that we want to try to keep a portion for profit right here. Um, Control Ripple, even though they created it. OpenCoin plans to hand out some 50 billion XRP ripples in the coming months this is years ago guys so they already planned to disperse half the supply and more in the future in an attempt to get the currency to function independently boom this is called a top-down approach guys instead of bitcoin starting out um, very decentralized but then only really incentivizing miners to accumulate more of it and now only the richest of the rich can afford bitcoin and even mine it um it becomes more centralized it's opposite they want it to become like the internet so Starting with, just like the internet, a few universities, a few major businesses working its way down to all the retail applications we see today. This is what they have in mind. This is the long game. Unfortunately, investing is one of the best ways to make life-changing wealth. Um, of course, you know, a lot of millionaires in real estate, no brainer, of course, um, anything like that. But to truly compound your money, just like Al, um, Alan Watts, um, Einstein has said, the eighth wonder of the world is compounding interest. And very few people even comprehend it. You guys can play little games, of course, with extremely high interest rates and double a penny every day for 30 days. And it's well over millions of dollars. That's because compounding interest truly is one of the eighth wonders of the world. So I just wanted to share that, guys. And overall... We can see right here, this is just an attempt to get the currency to function independently. Larson says his company aims to turn a profit by retaining a chunk. Interesting. Remember, Jed McCaleb, um, he had thoughts and concerns for a for-profit company with having this much power and money, so he forked the XRP ledger, developed Stellar Lumens, of course. I believe um, even he said in actual interviews, I'm not just making this up, you guys can go watch, he said that really, you know, Ripple and Stellar are not really competing. There's so much space and friction in this space. There's different verticals you can focus on. On wholesale and retail um you guys can act like one is better than the other that's fine i hold both all right so like likely 25 percent is what they'd be retaining of the total 100 billion ripple or ripples or xrp that will ever exist in the expectation that the currency gains value and yes network effects is something i will not forget um i did see anders l even just make a tweet to remind us 2016 we, we're talking dozens of the world's largest central banks top 40 50 governments that are actively working with ripple for years or at least being educated by them have trialed xrp you really think that's for fun you really think that they are building and decentralizing the system for no points when in fact singapore the uk japan all these countries already specifically said xrp is not a security if you think that xrp is going to die that that's completely fine i respect that i will not be selling my xrp whatsoever I'm going to be literally leveraging my XRP and, of course, the Spark tokens as soon as I get the real ones when Flare goes live and do my absolute best to participate in the network as much as possible and really provide liquidity for the system because the early adopters, first mover advantage is the real, real power. And the lower the sentiment becomes for XRP, the digital asset, the sooner I can actually become extremely bullish. And I just want to get this over with, bring the FUD, bring on the hate. I know that there's a lot of hate in this space because you're seeing other assets go up. Um, and I've always been an advocate of diversification, um, you know, discussing that actively on Patreon as well. So, you know, whether bring a price drop or we finally go, I still see a double digit XRP at some point. So... 
yes, I'm impatiently waiting just like you guys, but I'm not going to be losing faith in, you know, getting rid of my XRP at an all-time low to go chase something that has already done a 20x. So that's just my personal thought. I'm going to be leveraging my XRP and Flare as much as possible to develop a passive income. And if I haven't said already, um, I'm not really sure. Man, it is windy outside. Um, I actually sent over some more XRP to essentially just div um, gain interest on it in kind on Nexo while I wait for Flare to go live. All right, now, JC Collins, one of the most logical minds in this entire space. Um, there's very smart people that, of course, provide value for XRP, this digital asset space that are not affiliated with the company Ripple. And he's just another investor, I believe. And right here, the SEC lawsuit is actually a strong indication that XRP will indeed be the bridge. Exactly. Well, why? And he goes on to the bottom. Why bother with all of this if XRP was a dud? It seems obvious. Guys, just like I showed in the beginning of the video clip of David Schwartz, that was years ago and it is available on my Instagram. There's public calendars, you can go check it even when I reference it right here. You can see Jay Clayton's public calendar, Ripple meeting with even, what was his name, uh, the uh, assistant to the president, uh, Roscoe, John Roscoe. Don't quote me on that, but you guys can find that with a simple Google search. This is all documented. Now they're meeting with the, he says in this clip even, we're gonna play it too. Um, or actually I just uploaded the YouTube so I don't need to play it here, but you guys can follow me if you wanna watch it. Um, this is posted, let's see, January 5th. And they say that we're meeting with the SEC regularly every week. Why on earth are you gonna come at us, you know, four years later or two years later and say that we're not doing this? When they have their people documenting, making sure all their ducks are in a row to make sure all is good and great. So JC, once again, is just referencing, as far as I'm concerned, it's not, it's all about, it's only about taking the massive XRP bags from Brad Chris, the large holdings of executives, while putting government controls in place around how the escrow will be used. The escrow is the elephant in the room. Now, yes, we're aware, um, the, the dorks, they don't understand that it's actually programmatically locked and only a certain amount can be released each month, so they cannot dump the billions of dollars that everybody thinks. It's locked to ensure that there's trust and stability for the network. They want to roll it out slowly so that people are incentivized per this top-down approach that I've discussed. But... Yes, this is massive because if XRP does actually succeed, Ripple, um, some of these gentlemen could potentially be trillionaires. And that is a concern for the U.S. government and probably other countries as well. So I'm not going to turn a blind eye to, the, to that. But please understand, XRP, in my opinion, at one point, maybe it was sold as a non-compliant security, just like Gary Gensler said Ethereum was with the Ethereum Foundation. And then they say even on the news, because we've watched it, um, you know, we're talking about like former CFTC chairmen's and not even the one, uh, Christopher Giancarlo, that's an advisor for Ripple, small world. And they said that, yes, at one point it could have been considered security, uncompliant sales, things like that. Didn't license it. I mean, you know, ex like we got fined by FinCEN years ago in 2015. They still called it a virtual currency. And then it can develop and turn into more of a payment token or utility token. So that's how I see Ethereum. I think Ethereum is an entirely a utility token. I mean, it's still working on scaling appropriate and lowering those fees. I love ETH and what it's done for the space. But uh, people are really going to change their mind about XRP. And I'll still welcome the bandwagoners back with open arms when it's at $10 plus. So it's just a waiting game. Zero doubt. You guys do what's best for you, but I'm not going to be capitulating everything I've invested. I'm willing to lose, but I don't think I'm going to be losing it whatsoever. All right, so this is available on Instagram. Also, so I trust Capital, but before we get to the next thing, um, they're going to be doing an NFT giveaway. This is a non-fungible token. I have retweeted all of this. Keep in mind, right here, this legendary NFT winner is going to receive a free account for life. So how can you join? You can like, comment, and retweet this tweet in this actual blog, to blog, toast, blog post below. So I highly recommend participating if you can. And we can see that there's actually going to be some NFTs given away, and they're the only ones that will ever exist. What's the winner going to win? Ideally, something that um, a free account for life. So this is crazy. Of course, I do have an account with iTrust Capital because I want to take advantage of 0% taxes. If my Roth IRA that has XRP and some digital assets in it does, in fact, go to $10 million or more with 0% tax, I'd be you know happier than anything. And of course, I just want to reference this because people don't understand. If it went to 5 million, 10 million, whatever you have, I know some people do have those bags out there. 
which is insane to me. Um, but I can always just go, okay, let me sell back in the UST. I already have enough crypto exposure. Let me go back to my old custodian, such as Vanguard, Fidelity. Let me throw it into a conservative index fund. Or if I wanted to diversify and kind of dance between different assets, I would be attacking right now for the long term. Polkadot, of course, you can't ignore the dot ecosystem and especially even XLM. So the brother and sister, the gold to the silver, the retail to the wholesale, just things of this nature. So all in all, guys, I highly recommend it. Um, you do not have to pay to at least create an account and get your own referral code and if you share your referral code and people sign up you can actually um, have a better chance of winning you can earn some money very very exciting so all of this will actually be um, on some of my recent tweets on twitter all right and links are in the top of the uh, description because kevin cage is one promo code if you decide to get an account and that will actually give you an entire month free anyways right here this is what i really want to share with you guys and we'll essentially call it a day we have wrath economist so just a passing observation about xrp and central banks in this article in the american journal of computer science and information technology last december so let's pay attention to this quickly we're going to read this this limitation so we're actually going to speed up here because of this gateway system, Ripple does not remove the trust relationships required in the correspondent banking system, but simply shifts them to other parties. So it's not a disruptor, it's an enabler, it's a bridge. Interesting. And we're seeing that a lot of assets such as QNT, Algorand, a lot of them are focusing on enabling instead of disrupting. Why? Because they get it. They understand that the best way to appreciate and value, solve real problems, and help people in this new financial system is to integrate and not fight work with them so this limitation could be removed if such a system would use central banks to act as gateways since the currency issued on ripple would then actually correspond to the real currencies this would remove all trust requirements for settlements other than the trust in the central banks which is a necessity in any case when transacting any corresponding currency and just remember just a few things that are going through my mind why do you think that there were talks of private privacy features on the XRP ledger years ago. It's because they listen to central banks, guys. They've been educating them, the IMF, the World Bank, you name it, BIS, for years. And they're not going to just disrupt. They're going to listen to their customers. They're in the know. And you're listening to some dude on Twitter that's saying XRP's dead when I would much rather trust somebody that's actually discussing with these executives of central banks. Listen to Ashish Birla, GM of RippleNet, who's in active discussion saying, yes, well, we talked to our smaller SMEs, small medium enterprises. They wanted something like line of credit, LOC, which specific, specifically leverages XRP. So that's going to be rolling out. We have Flare Networks, of course, Flare Finance, and of course, these privacy features now with the XRP ledger. There's always going to be FUD. Um, I would just recommend, yeah, you can be concerned, but do your own research before you either FOMO in to buy something or panic sell because uh, it only takes once. I'm not about to panic sell before we finally get moving, especially since all these alts are already going up 5x and 10x. So please decide for yourselves, guys. There's always going to be fear. There's always going to be greed in every single market. I'm not perfect. I make stupid mistakes. And my personal decision is that I'm not going to be capitulating whatsoever. It's also Wrath Economist. So what is it and what does it mean? Well, it's certainly not a plan. What jumps out, and this is a while back, remember, is the description of the ledger from a risk perspective and how tying into central government currencies like a bank payment hub further eliminates trust and risk seems germane to this central bank digital currency discussion. I always value his information as well and also just kind of his opinion. So great follow, guys. If you are in the community, highly recommend you follow this gentleman right here. All right. So in other news, yep, ramp is still going. I know we shared this on literally last Monday seven days ago we were at what um 28 cents i think when i did the video um it was at 25 earlier so i was kind of late but once again if anybody hopped on this of course this is one of the early ones we we're on in cages trades on patreon it's done almost a 100 percent return in a single week so congrats to some buddies um we do have one buddy i'm going to keep him anonymous um but congrats for reaching a million dollar status in terms of your crypto portfolio respect for always taking profit as well coulda woulda shoulda we could have always had bigger bags but remember, there's very few people that are actually realizing some profits because you just never know. So we're going to keep enjoying this and congrats to you and everybody else that has been successfully moving. I know a lot of people actually, even with um, OGN, we've been buying this since 22 cents. We had some successful people. You know, we had the staggered sells, 53 cents, 80 cents, one dollar. We're actually holding for some more targets. The majority of my bag is out because I'm happy with the 5x my investment is discussed last week on Monday. But we've had some people actually move this right into ramp when we were at the 20, 25 cent mark. 
made me so happy. What a nice ride. So beyond excited for that. And the reason why I'm talking about these two other assets, and I'm not telling you to buy these, what I'm saying is there is opportunity in these other ecosystems that we're paying attention to, and I'm still accumulating XRP. I'm adding to my long-term bags, and specifically XRP. Why? Not only because I'm biased and I hold a lot in my research, but because it's one of the few assets that has been participating in this alt season. Um, there's going to be people that congratulate us in the future, acting like XRP got lucky and it was a close call. Um, maybe I'm looking through a tunnel, but I think that XRP is going to be fine in the future. So one thing I want to reference, though, is ramp. I do not like buying in bulk using Uniswap and these DEXs and these exchanges because I don't really like risk. It makes me concerned, especially with assets that are not super, super liquid quite yet. But my personal expectation for this guy is that we see a Binance listing. Why? Well, because if you read the white paper on one inch, they actually set limit orders to incentivize the value of the token to go up over time, um, collateralizing assets and over cross-chain liquidity. Look at the partners, Solana, Icon, Knowles. Um, we're talking Moonstake, Metanix. Crust, of course, that's uh, one that um, in Alliance Block, these two are what King Solomon talks about all day long. Alliance Block has some very strong partners like the London Stock Exchange, IOST, Tomo Chain, Tezos, The Graph, Elrond. Can't ignore that. And of course, just a reference, good roadmap. I like what I see. Microsoft and Binance as part of their team and advisors with BlackRock, Deloitte, JP Morgan. We got Arrington, XRP, Capital as well. So I can't ignore this. I think it's sound to uh, think that ramp should pump even further when we get a Binance listing. Now, Kevin, why are you thinking that? That is way too much speculation. Well, I don't just look at the chart. I do fundamental analysis as well. And what did we see and how did we catch OGN? Well, I understood that their buybacks were timed. So at 22 cents, we bought... What happened when it first pumped to like 40 cents and did 100% return? They announced um, some buybacks. And I was like, awesome. Then what happened later when we got that next pump? Binance announced staking for OGN. Do you see how these trends are our friends? These are the things I look at. Um, I do not just look at the chart. No, no, no. I look at the partnerships. I look at the roadmap. I follow their Twitter. I look at the GitHub. I talk to people in the know. Um, I do everything I can to get that extra edge. So highly recommend kind of doing that. And we will see what happens for ramp in the future. Um, this is one of my favorites as well. For now, that's a lower cap. Um, OGN, for example, we've been attacking on Patreon since it was well under even 40 mil market cap. I know some people got in really, really early, but for me, I like using OTC brokers. I don't like buying stuff on um, Uniswap. I use, like one of my main ones at least, is Caleb and Brown. And I'm not selling you anything. It is not, um, it doesn't cost anything to use. It's just an OTC broker. You don't have to be rich. You don't have to be an accredited investor. It's linked in the video description under my exchanges or probably in the pinned comment. And the reason I use OTC brokers like Caleb and Brown is not only because I want security if they want to custody my assets or if I buy it through them, they can send it right to my, you know, Ledger Nano. It's because I like the hands-off approach. If I'm driving, I can shoot them an email, shoot them a message on Messenger, give them a call, say, hey, buy this. You can direct swap. Let me set a limit order for a massive bag to buy XRP if we hit this price or sell XRP at this price. Because right now as a U.S. investor, I can't buy XRP on Coinbase or um, Kraken or anything like that in bulk. And maybe I don't want to have a huge amount of money. I'm just an exchange that's centralized. So I'd much rather leverage tools that are available for us. So that's just something. The reason that I'm shilling that right now is because people are so confused and they act like I don't um, tell them like what I'm using. So everything's linked in the video description. These are services I actively use and I only share them because I believe that they actually add value. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, overall, let's kind of go through what we talked about. XRPcharts.ripple.com. You can check out this. Keep an eye on that volume as well. I also anticipate per the previous one minute video that I uploaded... Dilip Rao, retired, former global head of infrastructure for Ripple. He's had some of the best quotes in the space. I love watching all of his old interviews. Highly recommend it. And he's an advisor for FlashFX, a longtime Ripple partner that just announced per a previous video I did that they're going to be building or are building currently new ODL corridors. So XRP is at, you know, 40 cents. So boring. We're missing out on other things. I'm not selling because they're still building. We have announcements with central banks. We have plans for Brazil. We have so many other things. So you guys decide for yourselves. I just wanted to share that um, and also just kind of keep you motivated or just remind you, decide for yourselves. This is not financial advice. I'm just some voice on YouTube that trades crypto, invests and researches a lot. So whale alert, some, you know, money on the move as always. Um, you know, I know everybody talks about things like Jed McCaleb as well, dumping. Um, there's always going to be something, of course. 
JC Collins, highly recommend you follow that gentleman. If you guys want to follow me on Instagram to kind of watch that clip, I did in fact, um, you could probably type it on YouTube, Kevin Cage, David Schwartz, SEC, and watch that for yourselves. Just referencing, because I know there's a lot more people that have been paying attention to the space over the last month and we're not here back in January and December. I trust capital giveaway, links in the top of the video description. Um, ramp, we'll see what happens. I think that at least in the weeks ahead or months ahead, I will see higher highs for these assets. And OGN, we will see. Um, I'm primarily out of it now, but wouldn't surprise me to see $2, $2.50 per the fibs. Um, there are moon scenarios that I see, but I, uh, I'm much rather take my profits into USD, his side cash, and then add to my long-term holdings and assets I truly believe in, such as XRP, XLM, QNT, Algo, ADA, VeChain, HBAR, you name it. Um, they're getting very, very expensive now, so I'm trying to roll into others that have not quite gone yet. And uh, yeah, this is absolutely alt season, guys. You just never know when things are going to really make a move. So all eyes are on the charts. I hope you enjoyed, and I will catch you in the next video.